in a larger room. I would prefer to sit down and listen to all of you. Mm -hmm. uh, and my office is not as big as you are. I think if we can just try and stay here and squeeze in, um, we don't, we're just kind of um, trying Who, to keep it brief. Who's recording this? Gentlemen, sir, um, are you uh, from the Pioneer? It's just a couple of students. Who are you recording, recording for? For ourselves. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. good. And some faculty colleagues as well. Yes. Wonderful. Um, I would like to gather in some space, and I can't see all the faces. Mm -hmm. So, I don't so know what would you recommend? I would think that we could all squeeze in if we can all just come in. Sure. If that is fine. Okay. Uh, I don't want to be. Uh, okay. From you. Can everybody see President Joe Bridges? Yes. Well, we can't. You're all here and it looks like you'll have a piece of paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please, um, uh, who is your first person? So then we're all the sports persons. Yes. Please, read your document. Welcome to me. We stand here as members of the Whitman community to demand that the exclusions and aggressions we face on this campus be taken seriously. We stand here today in solidarity with Sammy because we matter. As Sammy speaks, please know that we speak with him. To whom it may concern, as a student of color in a predominantly white institution, I am far too familiar with the microaggressions of institutional racism. I was profiled and then harassed for the second time by Whitman security over Thanksgiving holiday break. Both my studenthood, studenthood and my residence in my own home were called into question. As the officer addressed me, I had to remain calm and collected while I stood filled with disgust and rage over the questions I was being asked, which were so obviously rooted in profiling situations. Hearing those words disgusted me because I could see what was happening. I was perceived as suspicious and did not appear to be a Whitman student, let alone a resident of the French house. These types of confrontations on behalf of security are taxing, and they reaffirm that students of color are not regarded in the same way as white students. They marginalize students by perpetuating feelings of isolation through the questioning of their presence at this college by a Whitman paid employee. On Thursday, November 27, 2014, at around 2 a.m., I was in my room in the French house when I heard knocks on the front door of my house. I remained in my room for a few seconds, questioning why someone would be knocking this early in the morning. I got out of bed expecting to see one of my housemates, who perhaps was locked out and would be internally indebted for me, to me for opening the door. I wish I could say this was the case. When I opened the door, I was taken aback to be confronted by a Whitman security officer. The following events took place. When I opened the door, the security officer was quick to mention something about an open window on the second floor of my house. I was dumbfounded and continued to stand in the foyer while I faced the officer on my porch. Great, there's an open window, I thought. Then he proceeded to ask me if I was a student at Whitman College and if I was supposed to be there, in my own house. At this point, I knew that this, was in, that this interaction would be more than it had to be. The officer then proceeded to ask to see my Whitman student identification. I tried to explain that I lived in the house and had just gotten out of bed to open the door, that I was shocked to see him, and that I was not going to present my identification because I did not have it on me. The officer grew angry, became abrasive, and demanded that I produce a Whitman ID. I tried to explain to him that this was not the first time I had been profiled, and that I was reluctant to carry, around, to carry out the absurd request, considering the fact that I opened my door to my own home for him. Did he possibly assume I climbed a neighboring tree onto the second floor and broke in through a window? Why would he make such an assumption? I did not plan to rummage through my room at 2 a.m. to prove that I belonged in my house, in this space, and in this school. Why would he demand to see my ID? He did not, see the demand, he did not demand to see the IDs of the three other white individuals currently sleeping peacefully in their beds. I became upset and stood my ground. He gave me an ultimatum. I could cooperate and present the ID, or he would call the police. To which I responded, "You are security. Please do what you feel. Please do what you feel you have to." He then proceeded to phone the Walla Walla Police Department, to whom he said, "I need some backup." Why would he need backup? I was acting as collective as I could, given the circumstances. As he waited for the police to arrive, he remained in my doorway. That is when I invited him to either come inside or step outside. He ignored me. 
Finally, three police vehicles arrived in my house with their emergency lights on. The officers hurriedly stepped out of their vehicles and approached the security officer, who then filled them in on the situation. The Walla Walla Police Department officers proceeded to ask me some identification questions. Do you attend school here? Do you receive mail to this address? And as I, and as I had distrust for a police group and their presence makes me anxious, my main concern was to curtail the whole situation and get them to leave my house. However, they continued to demand my identification. I went, to a, a, I went up to my room knowing that I could not find my Whitman ID since I had not seen it over a week since the college was in break and I, did, and I did not need it for any particular reason. My wallet was stolen a few weeks ago, so I did not have my driver's license um, either. All I could find was my passport, which I handed to one of the officers in, my, in the foyer. He quickly looked at my picture, thanked me, and stepped out of the door. Looked over to the Whitman security officer and said, he belongs here. This exchange was ridiculous. I was not believed to be a student nor an inhabitant of the French house. I can't help but postulate how this whole incident would have developed if I were a white passing individual who answered the door. However, that is not my reality. And as a result, I had to endure harassment on the part of a Whitman paid security officer and was forced to interact with police authority. This all took place within my own home, which is most troubling because ideally, this should be a safe space for me. What would have happened if I did not have any form of ID on me? What would have happened if I had reacted confrontationally? Would I have gotten arrested? Would I still be alive today? This whole experience was extremely disturbing. And worst of all, it was utterly unnecessary. In the light of recent events in Ferguson, Missouri, <clears throat> and across the United States, I hope that the college will acknowledge my experience and will not dismiss my account like they have in the past. This is not the first bad experience I've had on campus, and I'm tired of being targeted by Whitman security. I am tired of not being acknowledged as a student based on the color of my skin and my overall appearance. Like I said in a previously filed, yet still relevant complaint to the Dean of Students Office, I expect the college to hold faculty and staff to a higher standard. This was not the case that Thursday. All students have the right to be approached in a respectful, courteous, non-fearful, non-threatening manner that does not invade their personal space. The motivation behind his behavior may have been subconscious and unintentional, but it is still unacceptable. Staff needs to be trained to interact with all, especially minority students, in a non-judgmental, non-aggressive way. They need to take a moment and ask themselves why they're questioning specific people. Negating even small acts of racism will continue to encourage and excuse racist behavior in the students, faculty, staff, and administration. I hope that the college is able to comprehend the magnitude of the situation that took place on Boyer Avenue this past Thanksgiving Day. I hope that the college understands the danger of the racial profiling of brown bodies, especially in such a predominantly white space as Whitman College. Students of color should not be associated with suspicion or criminality. Students of color, or faculty of color I will add, should not have to go through these traumatizing experiences. How can we be expected to perform as students of this college when we are not treated as such? Last year, Whitman College released a statement after studi students rallied in Memorial demanding institutional support for students of color and other marginalized groups on campus. The first line of the statement read, quote, Whitman College takes seriously its commitment to ensuring that our campus is free of discrimination, harassment, and intimidation, unquote. That night, I felt discriminated against, harassed, and intimidated, despite being exactly where I was supposed to be. This is not an isolated incident, but rather an extreme case where internalized racism, under the guise of security, came to my door at 2 a.m., harassed me, and reaffirmed that my brown body was not welcome at Whitman College. I expect that proper measures will be taken to address this very serious and relevant incident. Sincerely, from Wichita, an exhausted first-generation college student and civil rights activist, but more importantly, a student at Whitman College. We stand here as members of the Whitman community to demand that our voices be heard, our beings be visible, that we matter. We stand with Sammy and with every other member of this community who has been profiled and humiliated and marginalized on this campus. We stand to demand that we matter.
I will ensure that I can ensure that I'll do everything possible from my position to address the concerns you raise. We cannot tolerate uh, profiling of any sort on this campus, and I'm shocked that to learn that this happened, I need to learn more, and I need to learn more about the individuals with whom you interacted. I don't know much about it, but uh, I can assure you that uh, I will pursue this aggressively, and actions will be taken to address the broader issue of staff and faculty who engage, and other students who engage in acts of aggression against st our students and faculty and staff of color. Uh, and you can hold me accountable for that. I will begin working on this tomorrow. If I can have a copy of your letter, um, I will do it. Thank you for coming. Thank you, all of you, for presenting this in such a compelling and powerful way and for raising the issue yet again. I'm sorry that it is yet again. We will work on it. I will work on this very hard. Thank you. Thank you. I also send you a copy. Could you send me a little comment? Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you for raising the issue.